There are two roads which human beings can follow, one of wisdom and the other of ignorance. The path of the masses is generally the path of ignorance, which leads them into negative situations, thoughts, and deeds. These in turn lead to ill health and sorrow in life. The other road is based on wisdom and it leads to health, true happiness, and enlightenment. (sighs) My name's Frank Castle and I'm the Sorcerer Supreme. And I'm here with my etherical translator, Paula. And a special guest that we're going to announce momentarily. Say hi, Paula. Say hi, Paula. <laughs> um, my special guest tonight, good friend. Uh, people have quoted me as saying <clears throat> that I call you uh, 100% accurate, but I say 100% accurate to me. Yes. Right? So don't get nervous that I say okay. that. But that is what I tell people. And they go, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So Christy Bell is here with us. Um, wh- what would we say that you do? Um, how would we define it for everyone? Uh, astrologer, tarot card reader, comedian. Awesomeness. Pure awesomeness right Friend. there. Friend. Friend. Um, sacred mm-hmm. feminine. Check it out. Uh, before every show starts, I usually like to thank my favorite people in the whole world. Chris and Cherie Gio, I love you guys. Thank you. Without you, oh, man, I wouldn't be doing this like this. And uh, I thank you so much for that. I want to say shout outs to everybody in the chat room and everybody out there listening. I love you guys for sticking thick and jumping into the deep end of the pool. I hear the talk, the negative and the positive, and you know what? Nothing affects me except the good news, right? And the good news is we're all becoming fearless. This is our journey, though this is my journey. Um, We share many things across these journeys and the characters I bring out for you, my friends, people that have joined me on the adventure, and the special abilities they have and what they can do and their versions of explaining this from their perspective. So it's just not, Oh, well there's crazy Frank again. Mm -hmm. Well, Frank ain't crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank is on point and he's rocking it like the funky joint. But now's the time for my disclaimer. This is the story of my journey and my journey alone. I don't suggest you try this at home alone. That is, unless you're ready, then by all means proceed. But first we suggest you find a reputable shaman who knows what he or she is doing And then travel safe in the love and the light. And remember, the universe rewards bravery. Don't forget to check me out. H-E-I-S-T-C-L-I-C-K. That's the good music that we do. So, Christy, I want to ask you a few questions. Sure. How did um, you get into this? How did you get into, like, reading cards and astrology? Well, for me, I used to be a science researcher. And I've seen a lot of weird stuff through science, through quote unquote, the correct way, following mm-hmm. the correct path in how, you know, we're raised. So we're raised to go to school and college and all these things. And I went that way, but it just never felt right to me. It never felt like something was always missing. And I had a lot of trauma built up over years and years, and it manifested in my body, um, in my pelvis. And okay. I got 
this special therapy. It was physical therapy. It was intervaginal physical therapy for like a uh, injury. Okay. And while my physical therapist was working on me, she said, "Have you ever thought of of looking into astrology?" And I, I was a science girl. I was like, well, I've always been interested, but never, you know. Does that make sense to a scientist, astrology? I mean, I like it. Like, as I started looking into it, astrology, it kind of helped me because when you work with astrology, you're working with kind of like a mathematical sort of formula okay. that generates a chart for a specific point in time. Okay. And I really liked that. So when I, I, she hooked me up with an astrologer who used to actually work for Pepsi. (laughs) It's so funny. And left Pepsi. Um, And uh, it's just really interesting because as I started working with astrology, I started like using it as data points. And then it wasn't until about a year ago that I started bringing tarot cards into the, into what I do with astrology. So. I have a question. Sure. From going from science, right? Yes. And then into the uh, astrological charts and then seeing truths begin to line up mm-hmm. through the mathematics, did that change your internal belief system into believing there's more happening? I, you know, I, I, of course, we're in New York and you hear sirens. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome can, to New York. <laughs> you can never be on the air when there's, you know, um, <laughs> that's called Mercury retrograde. Um, for me, yeah, it helped because it was like I try and tell people I use astrology and then I use tarot as a data check to astrology. So I'm always trying to use data checks. And as I was looking at the astrology of dates, I was seeing it reflect with like giant things in my life. It wasn't like I could met, like bend dates of happening right in manipulate my, your data yeah, yeah i couldn't i had i was like oh yeah i got surgery on this date and the moon was right here with my own moon or things like that and i started seeing the the synchronicities i guess you could say on paper which i need Did that freak you out though like because that's that's brings into a higher belief system yeah more, like a higher purpose or somebody with a greater mind than ours who created this i mean it's showing the mathematics behind it that's a waking up within itself. Well, yeah, but it would make sense for Christy because she was a research scientist. So she was dealing with aggregate data all of the time. So basically you're dealing with aggregate data mm-hmm. and then a subset of data creating data points, which is pretty similar to what astrology is. It's aggregate data, the universe, and your subset of data, which is the zodiac, and then the points. So it would make sense that it would fall in line with something that you chose to do as a profession. Yeah, and, and it's something like you asked if, I, if it freaked me out. It didn't freak me out. It helped me realize that there is something more. And I've always thought there was something more. And in science, <clears throat> it's always like arguing that there could be something more. But well, Until you could prove it. Yeah. So it's for me, it, it helps me because I believe in what science does in a lot of ways but i also i also think that science can be detrimental to the public at large yeah well it, it leads you down a path of truths and facts and then hits walls and can't be explained but this is magic what's going on is magic so there's geometric mathematics to the universe and then you have things like uh consciousness that bends all kinds of issues in theories and it just it's like well that's impossible mathematically it's incorrect that you could manifest the cup in front of me but yet there you are there's no cup and now there's cup so that breaks science until science catches up to it so basically magic is is untouched science un, un, un understood science right well old school like quote unquote magicians were just old school scientists like who got persecuted for their beliefs, Mm -hmm. you know, and even like with, even with medical science, like germs, people looked at germs and like, how could you say germs are real? Like the, or were seen as like, somebody described it as, uh, old school shamans used to call them little ants then live on your body. Right. Were germ, basically bacteria. Okay. So things like that. Well, yeah, I remember a story where the, they were delivering babies and people were just getting sick and babies were dying. And one of the doctors was like, yeah, wash your hands. Yeah. And then they put him in a mental institution for that. And then it, that's exactly what you needed to do to stop 
getting these infectious diseases over and over. Yeah. It's like, yo, you don't wash your hands, smoke a cigarette, kiss your wife, eat dinner, go back, deliver another baby. You they throw out the trash, deliver another. You can't do that. Well, they didn't know any better. They right, thought the right. sign of a gentleman or something was to have his hands dirty and stuff. But that's not the truth. You know, they would not bathe and wash for months. And then they would be like, well, to, to wash is ridiculous. And it's like, no, you have to wash. Cleanliness and godliness are very closely related. All right, we're getting off track, though. With all this. So, In true Frank fashion. In true Frank fashion. So, you, all right, one led to the other. Mm-hmm. In other words, tarot came up, right? Tarot came up, um, yeah. Uh, just to, I, I, my intuition, like Paula has, like both of you have such strong intuition and energy. Like, I don't know if you guys feel it, but just the three of us sitting next to each other, like. It's jumping off, right? You like, can ah. feel like magnetism here. And that's something that I can't explain with numbers. Like, right. So I started flipping tarot cards for clients just to see. And I noticed, and I got a gig for like a bachelorette party where I couldn't do astrology. I just couldn't bring my, my computer with me because I wasn't, I didn't have access to Wi-Fi, which is where I get my programs. Okay. I was like, okay, I'm just going to take this as a tarot gig and see what happens. And I got paid double because people were just like, Oh my God, how did you know all this stuff? Right, right, right. So it was pretty accurate. Very accurate. Yeah. So wait, wait, so as a scientist, Mm-hmm. How does flipping cards mm-hmm. and getting these answers, how does that cross over? I, That's big. It's hard for me to even explain because I think it's different for everybody. I think everybody has a talent mm-hmm. where they use their intuition. Right, right, right. And it's just that mine is I'm using my intuition, seeing the patterns of the cards and asking people questions. And for some of the non-believers, I have to explain to them like, Okay, we're just going to look at this from a psychological perspective. Let's just use these numbers psychologically. And okay. for the people who are like, I believe in everything, just go for it. We go to like, did your grandmother die two years ago type stuff, like mm-hmm. things right, like that. Right. So it really depends. For me, it's just like, oh, my God, I finally feel free and I can express this part of my body that I was never able to express before. Okay. So it's but it was like some in, innate talent that came out. Right. So it's something that drove you to do this. And now it feels great doing it. It feels great. Right, right, right. I had that similar thing with being a hip hop artist and using my voice. We were talking about this earlier and then me going, but I'm never happy. Like, I love the music. I love the fans. I love this, but I'm still missing something. And they said, well, yeah, you're a shaman. And I said, what does that even mean? And then I went down that path and just. I seen how the voice and the magic of your voice, you know. Yeah, you needed to tell a different story. Right, right, right. With your voice. Exactly. Yeah. You're doing it almost yeah, you're right. Using your voice, but you needed to tell. And as an inspector, story. you're dealing with uh, p- fruits, vegetables, plants that you're supposed to be ingesting. So it's a noble kind of job, mm-hmm. but you're not eating any of it because you're seeing what's being going on to the food and, and everything. That's because you're you're plant elemental. You're a shaman. It's you, by the way. Thank you very much for those that don't know. I was told I was a plant, right? And then I actually became a plant. <laughs> Yeah, I have a hard time saying this, but we had the portal open in the house and I was Dude. making sure everybody was OK. Yeah, that was because of Christy. Yeah, I know. And um, she came earlier and helped me get rid of some things. And uh, what well, we're going to talk, she used some essential oils and we did some meditations and we just spoke and we looked at certain things as a team and it like cleared everyone out. Thus allowing the portal to open because we were in the right connective Paula and I were in the right connective mode, but people were flying up through it. We had company and they were flying up through this thing. And I was like, oh, I got to make sure everybody's all right. And then I hear turn around and I'm like, well, turn around. And Mm -hmm. it was me facing me and I was a plant, but I was, I looked so awesome. It was like a plant person growing up into the portal, but rooting into the core of the planet. And um, I said, well, Christy did say I was something with a plant. But I didn't think she meant I was going to change into a plant and literally yeah. root into earth. And uh, it felt amazing. So thank you for that, by the way. These are some of the things that um, we've been sharing yes. by being around each other. Oh, yeah. And things that we've been experiencing together as well. You know, right. um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, do you want to go into how we met Chrissy? Well, 
I want to hear a little bit more about the tarot cards. Okay. So th- this continued for how long? With tarot? Yeah, with tarot and even readings. Well, I've been reading uh, astrology for like, I guess about four years now, but I didn't start reading. Prof- I don't even know. I have such a hard time calling myself a professional at anything because I don't think anybody's a professional. I think we're all just learning. Inf- yeah. lear- we're, yeah. we're learning. <laughs> But I've been learned, uh, reading clients, quote unquote, for the last two years. And it's funny that's how long I've been a shaman. <laughs> <laughs> but tarot, I started last year because I just I, I pick at my fingers, and I never know why. I'm always like picking at my fingers, and I start as soon as I started working with it, I realized, oh, I'm moving energy. I'm using myself, my body. To actually work to move this. the energy. Yeah. So you had the hand movements and didn't know why, basically. Yeah. I had, my mom did it, too. And she she always rubbed her hands together. So I think it's like we came from a lineage that did this and then got told they couldn't. And then I think that's what happened. It's pretty interesting, though, that we find out. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's like a suppressed feeling. Yeah. Right. So so you think you have an OCD complex because you keep, you know, touching your hands or nipping at your hands. And uh, then you realized it was uh, it's a regression. It's something that you suppressed a long time ago. Yeah. It's actually part of you, your your DNA history. And now it's coming back mm-hmm. to the surface. So this is this is really crazy stuff, but not crazy, crazy in a good way. I say crazy a lot just to say it Uh, it makes me feel a little bit more sane. Although once you know you're the light, it's kind of hard to know anything else. You know, it's like hard. It's it's hard to plug back into the matrix and go, well, you know, it's like, nope, I'm here. Light time. So from that point two years ago, you've been practicing it and then you met me. How did now we introduce how did uh, you hear about us? Well, your lovely guest last week, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All the way I, uh, to Josh. Shout outs to Josh. Hi, Happy Joshy. birthday. Happy birthday. Um, he, him, his wife is a comedian. She's a wonderful comedian in New York. I don't know if I can say her name on air. But uh, her Also I, an angel. Uh, yeah, she's wonderful. also an angel. Yeah. And she and I, uh, through working together in comedy, her, her husband and I have a lot of conversations and he was like oh my god you gotta check out gotta check out frank and he's the greatest guy ever (laughs) you know his how he talks he's so rad he's the oiler man (laughs) he's he's got he's the real deal you know like like that so (laughs) yeah josh and i had some eye-opening moments so okay so through josh and josh met me through sonia who's from australia who went to egypt they were in the pyramids talking on the same trip together, and she's like, "Yo, you got to check out this dude." So we're connecting from all over the world. Yeah, well, that's the that's the shift. That's the idea of waking up. That's what it is. You know, you you speak your truth, and then you find someone else who speaks a uh, their piece of the truth, and then they, you know, introduce you to someone who's speaking their piece of the truth, and on and on. And it's funny too. A lot of us would be unlikely friends. Like if we just saw each other on the street. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, like yeah, it's very eclectic. Uh, it's a very eclectic circle of friends. Like it's literally the mix. Life, yeah. Mm-hmm. All walks of life. So, what was your first impression? All right, let me not start there because that's going into me. When you wanted to uh, have the experience of the plant medicines, Mm -hmm. right? What was, did you get a calling to do this? Were you, were you wanting to do this for a long time? Like what was in you to get to, to that point? Well, for a long time, I was for a great part of my life. And I want to talk to the listeners out there because I see there's a lot of you out there. So I want to say hi. (laughs) Um, I was very suicidal. And for me, it was because I didn't know that part of what I was taught growing up was kind of like, it's hard to say, like brainwashing. I grew up Catholic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's brainwashing. Well, suppression, brainwashing, telling you that you're everything you think is wrong. But yet there are angels back then. But why can't there be angels now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was okay in the Bible, but it's not okay right now. So part of me was always very suicidal, thinking I was wrong all the time, thinking I was terrible, thinking that this terrible job I had uh, was the truth. And I used to work in a really 
awful lab that did animal testing. Okay. And it was just like for a sensitive person like you know Paula working in a corporation and oh, you yeah. know working for the USDA. the men. <laughs> yeah. That it <laughs> the monster the monsters that it's depressing as hell, you know? It's so depressing and uh, they make you feel like um you know, you're here with us, so it's so worth it. Yeah. But um, you can't seem to get as far as you actually need to get and make as much as you need to. It's, it's like you're dragon. just... dragon. Yeah. Get this dragon. You oh, know yeah, what I yeah. Mean? Catching like, the dragon. Yeah. yeah. That's um, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. They hold just enough salary over you. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yay, um, you'll be great one day. And you're just in this hamster, hamster wheel, wheel. And you're like, yeah. what am I doing? I found... That I knew everything about my job. And people are like, you don't know everything. And I'm like, mm, no, I do. So they tried me on every topic. And I passed with A's across the board. Well, sure, that's why it was time for you to go. And I went, wow, I know this job. Mm-hmm. Top, top. And then I became top inspector. And it was six years running. And I'm like, man, I could do this forever. No problem. Bang, fall right on my head. Right. Mm-hmm. Then you shouldn't be hanging out here if you know it that well. You're done. Move on. And you're not listening. So that's what they told me. So an injury brought me down the path of finding... Uh, ayahuasca um, and and everything connected to it. Yeah, it's usually some kind of big change. It is. It is. is. And there are subtle changes always, all little subtle changes, little subtle hints all around to let you know you shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. But we don't listen because we were taught that you get a good job, you retire, and you get a pension, and that's the way it is. And it's not that simple for everybody. You know, that we realize there's a uh, there's a definite uh, hypocrisy going on to the way we were taught and the way things actually are. And that's a very scary thing. And I'm sure that's how you felt towards the end of your career. Yeah, it's it's scary now because I think we're all going down Mm -hmm. this road and I'm glad that we're all kind of like we just came from a birthday party Mm -hmm. and we were talking before the show we're at this birthday party and here we are like all people thinking along the same path and we kind of see that we're coming together as like some kind of i don't even know like a tribe or something yeah like um Uh, you used the word the other day community a community yeah yeah Yeah, you know what people get afraid of that word community sometimes because it always turns into something crazy but i'm telling you out of everything i've ever seen in this world the synchronicities lining up what happened tonight and what's been happening around us. It's almost like we're finding our ways back to each other Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's, we're just turning on the machine now, like the, the light machine. Here we are. And now you're not, I I see the, the puzzle that was once, how do you do this? You know, like it goes from, uh, was nine 11 an inside job? Was that a ghost? Well, I heard a story. I read it in the Bible to what we see and do. And yeah. it's like, whoa, you know, because there was this separation. There was no shaman for like, there are sh- always shaman, but they try to remove them from the playing boards for the last like 200 years. And now it's making the big comeback. The the get togethers of uh, people and uh, they're cooking, bringing some food over. Yeah, everyone just getting together and, you know, who's bringing uh, food and who's bringing drinks and who, you know, uh, just uh, who's offering a place for everyone to get together and just talking about like-minded issues and it's really nice and no one you know the party t- you know it's funny because I came from corporate and when you go out with people from corporate or you go out with your friends from work all you talk about is work yep. and it's probably the biggest distraction in the world because there's real things going on people have real lives outside of work and you know we had come from this birthday party and no one said what they did for a living no one said you know what kind of car they drive or what what kind of what type of home they live in and we just really got down to the meat and potatoes of the conversation it was so refreshing you know i wasn't asked once what do you do for a living and it was just a really great night you know i didn't feel like i had to defend myself or prove that i you know had worked hard enough or you know it was just real conversation no one ca- no one cares more than what you think yep. and that's a great thing the cat. Yeah, yeah. Um, one yeah. thing, you know, there wasn't a lot of um, 
talk like that in terms yeah, no, of no pre- pretension. There was no pretense. But I did hear a lot of other words that interested me a lot tonight. Like what? Like, mm-hmm. man, I, I love you, man. Yeah. You know, I I can't wait to see you again. Yeah. You know, be yeah. safe driving. Yeah. I you're not staying. Oh man, have a great show. Um, it's different. I'm I'm from the Bronx. You get more than 10 people saying, yo, man, be great. Have a great night. You get a big F you to follow from somebody standing there. <laughs> Some kind of misery loves company. I'm too tough to love anything but my mother. And it's like, come on, bro. Let it go. Yeah. You know, we're we're an unlikely batch. If you look at all of us, we bring everything to the table. The mutts, almost. The Justice League <laughs> of Justice. the new... I, I say that because, honestly... All right, Justice League might be a little weird. That's no, comic no, bookie. No, it's fine. It's a good reference. The Justice Isn't League it better is than yeah. two hundred years ago? You don't think they would take the two of you outside and throw you in water oh, with rocks probably, around yeah, your we, head, yeah, yeah, and then just drowned. chop my head off Absolutely. and skin me and Absolutely. throw me in fire, right? Yeah. And now. We're making the comeback and nobody's stopping the progression. You're supposed to have been built into a box mentally and we're breaking the mental conditioning one thing after another. All right. So now are you comfortable talking about the DM? Um, yeah. Well, having the, the plant medicine experience itself. Of course. Yes. All right. Well, that's definitely awesome. Well, we're going to actually, we only got 26 seconds left. Where can we find you online? You can find me at Facebook, which is Christy Travels the World at Facebook.com. Christy Travels the World. Thank you guys so much. This is an interesting evening. We're going to break down the synchronicities. And of course, the plant medicines are on the way. Your protection from deception. All right. Staying on topic tonight. Yay. <laughs> Real people, real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Am I a beat or is this a dream? Is a dream? Is a dream? A fantasy where I'd rather be. So come and talk with me. Come and walk with me. Is this a wake up call from my reality? What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Frank Gasol, and you're listening to the Fearless on True Frequency Radio. And it's, uh, it's a great night. We have Christy as our guest. We're rocking and rolling through this. And uh, I'm very excited to hear this next part of your story. This is when we get into the plant medicine. So we meet through friends. And, um, and then... So I, I met Frank and Paula through Josh. Right. And I I had been researching plant medicines for a good year and trying to read like Graham Hancock and Amber Lyon. I was very much interested in her and Duncan Trussell. And I watched a lot of experiences on actually YouTube has really, really good documentaries um, and people actually videotaping themselves in a very interesting light, like a lot of. People who were former addicts, there's a guy who who has a, a page uh, kind of in honor of his experiences. Okay. So for me, I wanted to – I I mean, I'm not going to tell people out there what not to do. I just personally don't believe in depression medication and things like that. Now, that's my personal belief. I have friends that are on depression medication. And it works for them. But for me, I saw my family history and I thought that it was a bit more karmic. And as I started researching the the plant medicines, I wanted to understand what my life intent or purpose was. Sort of what I was supposed to do because I felt like a failure. Oh my. Okay. I felt like, oh, here I am, this astrologer, but... And a comedian who gave up her career to get to a point of almost homelessness. And here I am with no money in my account, having to ask my dad for help at the age of 29. And 
feeling like, oh my gosh, I want to take care of my dad and I can't. He has, I have to ask him for help. Right, right. So I think in my case, it was to talk to my depression and ask, why are you here? And I found Frank that way. And I went back and forth with you, but I talked to you for a really long time on the phone and I felt really um, connected. And then I looked at your astrology chart and I was like, oh, I am connected. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, really? yeah. Well, I, I remember specifically, like, it wasn't, I guess it's just meeting someone new. These are big deals. I mean, anyone that knows me, if you look at me, and you're like a girl that just showed up like, hey, you know, we should have an experience or whatever. It kind of looks weird, right? I got between the hat and the beard and everything. And I could understand how people are um, thrown off a little bit. Yeah. And I was very nervous because you were very like, oh, hello. Nice to meet you. And I was like, okay, I have to be toned down a little bit. And then immediately during our experience, something happened to me, right? I know – I felt connected to you instantly and they showed me who you were, right? But you were like older than me and I was learning from you. And then it flipped back to you in your experience telling me where to sit, like on the angle. I didn't understand any of this for a minute. And I saw you expand in front of me. That's what really happened. Your aura covered the the, the whole place. It like expanded outward. And uh, it was almost like it was too much and then it came back. And it, everything was like, all right, now we're sitting in it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that I watched that occur. I also watched. Well, I'll let you tell the story, but I saw as your shaman at the moment, Archangel Michael. Yes. So, uh, my name is Christina Michelle. I was, I think I was given my name because I was born on Easter, and my dad is named after Archangel Michael. He's Joseph Michael, and. Uh, when I went into the experience, I had an Archangel Michael prayer card with me, mm-hmm. which I have had my whole life or, or for a few years and it has traveled the world with me. It's been everywhere with me. I sleep with it and I recently actually lost it. And my experience was that you don't just need this card to have an angel with you. The angel is with you. It's not the card that's with you. Um, But Archangel Michael came into the experience. He kind of was the gatekeeper of, I guess, the whole experience. And then he had a fight with my father who did not want me to go into the experience. He came in and he was fighting with Archangel Michael and he was like, she's mine. She's contracted to be mine. I wanted to make sure she was safe. And I think it's important because... There was family karma there, but his family karma and mine, I think, were associated with the Catholic Church in that he or somebody throughout the years got sexually abused through something and that he put this protection up when I was born with like kind of like a contract. So we were kind of negotiating a contract. That's what was happening. So we were negotiating a contract. I've seen that before. I've seen that with myself and Paula. I've seen Paula sign out of so many contracts. It made Shiva's triple head turn five times. And he was like, yeah, now you see what I do. And I was like, wow, I've never quite seen a contract before. But yeah. I'll tell you a secret. That day, I worried about you because I seen what was happening. And I says, all right, I'm going to go take a look. And then they stopped me from looking. There was like this wall of purple energy or the violet energy. And I said, no, I am the shaman. You're going to let me in because I need to see. And a there was a punch pad came up out of the energy and I put in four numbers and I can't remember the numbers. It was like a double, 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 double number. Mm-hmm. And then a door opened in it and I walked in and I seen you upset. You were gripping the card. You're, I didn't know it was your father. I seen a man yelling at you and I seen Michael he had his wings around you. He was protecting you and he was yelling. And then he said to me, what are you doing? What are you doing? She's supposed to do this and now you're doing this. And I said, I, I can't tell anyone what to do. I could only oh. take you through the process. Yeah. So because we had – there's different ways and different medicines that you can go with. Um, we went for more of a quick one which lasted – when you waken up a shaman, it lasts hours. Well, I don't know if I'm a shaman per se – um, I'm still having trouble with 
deciding, you know, what my path is. But I think I'm somebody who tries to do the right thing all the time. <laughs> and I think what happened is um, the protection, the idea of being protected by angels and always feeling angels. The experience for me, which is only supposed to last a few minutes, lasted like an, well, acutely for an hour and a half. And then for the rest of yeah, the 24 funny. hours, I was still writing. I wrote in a notebook about it. And then for pretty much a week, I was like kind of in and out of meditation and things like that. But I would say the experience was great, but it led to a grander experience, which was a few weeks ago, which is... That was when we drank. The tidal wave of medicine themselves. Yeah, yeah. So we had tea. Herself. And it took a while to, to work up to being able to... All right. What worried you about, let's say, drinking over, you know, a smoking ceremony? Like what what threw you off? Was it purging? Uh, No, it was. Well, somebody just wrote Catholic bashing in the in the description. It was the idea that it I wanted to be of service to to the right thing. And I didn't quite know yet if it was the right thing for me. I think it wasn't the purging. It was more of making sure I was protected at all times. Now, I think what happened during the session was recognizing that it, I was protected. Um, but I think for me, there's a fear in the idea that I never want to deal with the, the bad energies, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So, hence Archangel Michael uh, is, I think, you know, he's he's mad cool. <laughs> Listen, when I first met him, he called me brother, and he held me like in a in a, that kind of embrace, like brother. And I said, "Are you like Hulk Hoganing me, brother?" Right? Like I do to people. Hi, brother. And he's like, "No, you're my brother." And I'm like, "I don't." And then I, it came back to me. I'm like, this guy is mad real. Like, it, I always thought anything angel was a joke, right? Mm -hmm. And then I met an angel and literally fell into my lap. And I was like, oh, my, what's happening to me? Then meeting him, he's bigger than them all. So I went from that experience to having an open discussion of him screaming at me, going, why didn't you make a drink? And I'm like, I can't make you do anything. And then he was like, all right, I'll handle this. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of made me watch. And I said, I don't want to know what's going on. I want to make sure she's okay. Right. That's yeah. it. And then they said, Oh, okay. And then I was like in a stadium watching and I'm like watching all the things flying. And I'm like, wow, when she breaks out of this, it's going to be the best experience of her life. And those things flying around aren't evil or nothing. That's the, the good stuff. And, um, what happened after that moment? Cause, um, that's when I backed away and you started emanating ultimate like when you push through, you things you were saying were just pure truth. Well, I think the important thing to say here is like what I did is not an amusement park ride. And a lot of times people use different things to get off and have fun. But this isn't like, oh, I'm going to experience this and then go dance in the club. It's more like. I've taken a really long time to think about this and respect the as, process. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you and I don't mean to cut you off, but that's my point and my argument all the time. If you're doing this to add this to a portfolio, to your portfolio of crazy things that you've done, this isn't for you. Yeah. If you're going in to fix you, then this is something that you should do. But if you're just going in to have the experience, to say that you had the experience, this is not for you because this takes a lot of work leading up to the event and then well after the event because mm -hmm. you're faced every time you're, you're, you're faced with your issues and they do not give you a chance. They do not give you an opportunity not to face your issues. They'll keep showing them to you and making you relive those issues until you walk through it, till you push through it. Yeah, and it's it's still 
the thing is I did one thing with plant medicine and then the big old tidal wave of plant medicine drinking ceremony. And it's, it's interesting because I'm still learning and I'm, I've got a lot more to learn and trauma doesn't just get fixed overnight. So anybody, I'm pretty sure most people that are listening to this program are thinking about working with some kind of trauma it, and trauma is big for everybody. Trauma mm-hmm. happens for every Everything. single person, but our traumas are our lessons. And for me, when I push through, I think it wasn't just my trauma. It was my family's trauma. I was trying to help because Here's these people that I am sort of distant from, but have been through so much trauma. And for me, it was, I'll point it out. The main message I got was we don't even need what we need. We don't need to smoke or anything in the world. Uh, People that are out there, maybe you just need three things. And this is just what the message I got. So it's different for everybody, but it is meditation music and for those who do this sacred dance which is not like oh i'm gonna go twerk in the club but like let me dance to open up my heart so that i can express love so those are the three things like when what i got with that experience now i was ordering frank around like (laughs) like i was like being all like I, I don't even know. Like, Well, that was that was on the, the first experience, right? Yes. Yeah, it was like, go over there, get back, a bat perfect. Wait, no, this angle. I'm going to tell you something again. You were saying these angles, and I know you can see something. So I went in again just mm-hmm. to see visually, like, what's happening. And I saw lines connecting us. And I'm like, I saw the bubble again, and it was... Instead of um, emanating outward, it was pulsating like boom, boom. And as you spoke certain things, it blasted out and hit me. And I was like, that's truth. And I was attached to this one line because you made me, you're like, that's perfect. And from there, I'm going to be honest, what I saw was I have a vision of you and being like a, a teacher to me. But I was difficult and you were difficult. We were hmm. difficult to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And we still stuck it out and learned what we had to, but had this like, oh, oh, right. Like, oh, because if you meet the two of us, we're kind of opposite in a lot of ways. And we've learned to not for as opposite as we are, we're more we got more in common than anything now. Right. But the physical up front, you know, the hello, nice to meet you. And it's like, hey, how are you? It's just weird right it almost looks like it would go not in that direction if you met paul or it'd be different right be like oh unlikely unlikely friendship yes all of us seem to be like this as the the hip-hop artist and josh being the punk rocker they were like ha they'll never meet again frank hates punk rock but i love to be a rebel so i don't hate anything like that i actually love it i just prefer rock and roll actually (laughs) but that's the irony right so they scatter all these people all of our allies all over the place so that we can't find them and what happens we all wake up in our due time and we leave ourselves clues and we find we find each other one person at a time and that's what we did with christy one of the things you knew something about me that no one knew but paula And then I started listening, listening to you, like really, really listening to like every word because you were saying a lot for an hour and a half. You were just like going. And then there were times where you guys spoke and it was like question and answer. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That happened with the Aya ceremony. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just jump ahead to the Aya ceremony because we only got 10 minutes left, really. Okay, so we meet again and we decide to do this, right? Um. You finally worked your way up to it, and you were, you were pretty ready to go. Now, what happened? What was your take on the entire experience? Okay, so this also ties back to what I did before. So uh, one thing that kept coming up was marshlands, that the importance of marshlands. And I kept getting this thing during the first part to tell me, uh, please help save the marshlands, or please advocate saving marshlands and estuaries and i was like oh i think i need to go back into science but 
one thing that happened during the drinking ceremony was the idea that the ocean is going to eventually, I mean, y'all, one day the planet will probably co- be covered in water again. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had to save the marshlands. Like I had it like, what do I do? I can't do this on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, you know, the, the guides in the Aya ceremony brought me back to the sea. And they were like, we're just here to bring you back to the sea. You are the marshland, my dear. Like you are, your kidneys are the marshland. Yeah. Right. And we're just purging you. So I'll tell you guys about the purge, which was for a lot of people, it was vomit. For me, it came out the other end, which isn't as fun. But my whole ceremony was just being like at a day at the beach. And I was laying down and being shown how the oceans and tides move and then how the the water goes to the marshlands and filters out the the chemicals from, you know, what what's emitted in the soil and then takes everything out and washes it away. So I think for me, it was just, that's what she did for me. I, or, you know, the drinking ceremony, she was just taking me into the ocean and cleaning me out. And there were things that I was faced with, like, you know, old people from my life and things like that, but it was never scary. It was never something where I was like, oh, things are going to hurt me. It was more like, no, let's take it out back to the sea and uh, and see how, let's clear this out of you and then you're going to get this out. And I mean, I've linked it to a lot of other things, but that's the gist of it too uh, for me. Well, that's pretty awesome right there. Did you have any, um, your interaction was specifically with Aya? My, I, well, for me, for, so some people see a goddess. For me, it was the ocean. So she was more the ocean. Okay. It was like the soul and the ocean. And yes. It was all like, yeah. The the idea of the, the nautical. And the other thing is people talk about seeing elves. And for me, when I was laying there on the beach, so I was on a beach and it was water coming in, little tiny crabs were walking up my arms and my legs, little tiny like fiddler crabs, I guess, if you know what little yeah. tiny ones and they were the elves for me right that they would be the elves of the ocean yeah right so sense. they said algae and barnacles and and little crabs are the elves of the ocean and that's what i felt it makes total sense <clears throat> when you see the harmony that's going on and then you get to see the background like the oz behind the curtain you wouldn't be surprised you're like oh i get it like, it would be this. Yeah, it makes total sense. Now I remember. So I don't want – because people think we're nuts, but I'm, they're getting the perspectives now. Like, a lot of my friends or people that listen think oh, we fight demons off and do all this stuff. Meanwhile, you're laying on the ocean and the ocean's talking to you while you're laying on the beach mm-hmm. and you're finding these little awesome, you know, pieces out one at a time. Everyone thinks you um, get confronted by the sea monster, so to speak. And it's like, yo, that's not like that. There's a lot of love and a lot of understanding and I want you to level up and it's time for you to, you know, it's only what you bring into the junk. Like you're, you're junk. You know, if there's something attached to you, you know, you're basically a, you know, a crappy person or you've done some stuff and you're holding it in or you, something was done to you and you're holding that in, you know, and that has to be released. And it takes time. Like you said, like you watched, I'm not going to talk about what it was, but you specifically even saw i said oh i don't i don't know how to get rid of this and you were like the orange color Mm -hmm. look at the and there was a kid in orange and it was me and you were like just let it leave now and i said oh you hugged him you said you gotta go it's time for you to go and he jumped out into the portal and i went that was me and then i opened again Mm -hmm. so i've been doing this for two years so there's just layer upon layer upon layer well, well, that's it. It's a very, uh, you know, for Christy, it was a very subtle experience because I think that's all her mind could could handle was a subtle experience. You're a very in-your-face kind of person, so I can understand how your experiences are so in-your-face and they, you know, they grab your face and they, they, they yell at you and they, you know, they scream information at you where I think... Christy needed to be cleaned out and she needed to heal herself, but she needed to do it in a very subtle way. So that's what they showed her. They gave her, they showed her through metaphor um, what she needed to do. 
And it worked for her because it only wasn't that experience. It was many, many days after the experience that you were still healing yeah. from that experience. And um, I don't know. I think it's for me, it was just seeing that my body is connected to the earth and to the sea and the importance. Well, that would be you, the sacred feminine. That's it right there. Knowing your connection, the anchor that you're supposed to place into the planet and do the job you're supposed to do. We're anchoring in a frequency, by the way, when we do that. People that meditate, they say anchor to your core and then your core into under you like your tailbone and then you're sitting upright and then your tailbone to the to where it connects to the floor, so on and so on down into the earth. These are practices that have been around forever, folks. We're bringing back somebody said it at the 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 party tonight it's the the greatest story unfolding unfolding yeah you know i i I always try to come up with it's the story that we're we're telling everywhere but nobody's just telling the story specific so it's like unfolding around us at all times but nobody's saying anything what's going on and you find out everyone's got a small piece that's what's going on that that was your new friend that you made what was his name tim 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 yeah that was his uh that was his quote for the evening that was very effective. Like it just, it rang true to the both of us as soon as he said it. It was a um, crazy moment. Uh, everything synergistically coming around again and, um, and hitting off. Let me ask you a question. When did you c- were confident in, in, in what I was showing you? Like trying to present to you like, hey, look, this is what's up. Like when did it w- become okay? Because huh. I... I, I I remember you saying to me, no, 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 I'm sorry, man. And I, I felt like so at ease after that. I felt better about my world. I was like, all right, this is real. It's more people saying, yo, man, it's you're doing it. You're doing it. And I'm like, OK, OK, I'm not wrong. I'm not crazy. I'm not. It's another person coming in and seeing it. Mm hmm. Well, for me, my data check, you guys, is um, my my boyfriend, he came to see Frank, too. And he's a, he's even more into, like, this has to be proven type stuff. Right, right, right. And seeing him and his experience work with you and working with you and his experience was one of those things where things clicked in for a team. It's the first time I felt like I was in a surgical team. Me, too. And afterwards, I realized, oh, okay, this is a family, this is a team, and we're all experiencing the same things independently, yet interdependently. Yes. So that's when I was like, okay, trust. And I think that's what it is, is we are different. And I've been taught, like, you have to be, make sure you trust everybody. And that's when I let down my wall and was like, I can trust again. So that's, yeah. Okay, cool. That that's just, that's really awesome. And I know the exact moment you felt that team and that that yo we we're working here. I remember looking at you, and then we were exhausted from what we were doing. Yeah. And, right. And uh, I, I don't want to really talk about it unless he's here. Uh-huh. But then we were working. We were like putting in work. We were like tapping each other on the shoulder, like all right, tap out and then take a break. Yeah. And then come back, and we were switching until. Paula showed up and saved the day. <laughs> yep. We're learning, though, that like, all right, tell me if I'm correct. You face the evil down and show everyone that it's there in the dark. And if everyone just looks. It has nowhere to go once you shine. Thank you, everybody. Christy, thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. We're your protection from deception. Rock and roll.